Contra was released for the arcade in 1987 by Konami and was ported to the NES a year later. The game takes place in the year 2633. It plays a special forces soldier, or soldiers if you choose the two-player co-op mode, sent to an island off the coast of New Zealand to destroy an enemy base, led by aliens who plan to take over the world. It's a side-scrolling platform shooter. You make your way through a variety of landscapes, blasting through enemy soldiers and collecting power-ups to upgrade your gun. Sounds very basic, and in the grand scheme of things it is, but it's anything but monotonous. You can fire in eight directions, including diagonal, which wasn't exactly common at the time, scale your way downward, drop to your belly and fire, and even swim. Or at least on the surface anyway, but that sure beats the automatic death that you find so often in video games after a short fall into H2O. There are multiple routes you can take, but the game is still linear, so you're never going to get lost or find yourself doing a ton of exploring, which is good for a fast-paced game like this. You want to just run and gun, but you still get to flex your strategic muscle by deciding which platform to hop onto to attack the next obstacle, offering a perfect balance. The game is pretty goddamn difficult, too, and although it can get really frustrating, it's never cheap due to poor design. It's just really challenging. So you have to be alert and not just droning your way through the level in a brain dead state and smashing the fire button until your thumbs bleed. There's also a few perspective changes throughout the game. You get a couple of pseudo 3D stages where you fire toward the bad guys in the background and then run towards it for the next section. And sometimes there are segments where you're battling an overhead boss and you're aiming in a fixed position of straight up and you adjust accordingly. More often than not, you're in the traditional platformer position, but these alternatives shape things up a bit. The controls are great, firing and jumping is spot on, and thankfully you can adjust your movements while in midair. Unfortunately, you lose all your upgrades once you die, but the game is relatively generous with power-ups, so it shouldn't be too long before you bump your way back up. However, you don't want to necessarily grab any power-ups you see, as some of the upgrades aren't quite as good as the one you already have, like the flamethrower isn't quite as good as the spread gun, so you gotta be conscientious of what you're picking up. You do respawn when you die, modeling itself after the arcade game, but you only get three lives, although you do get continues, so the game at least throws you a freaking bone with that. And of course, there's the famous Konami code, which grants you 30 lives and makes beating the game much more doable. The music is awesome too. Even the intro theme, which is only a few notes, is iconic as all hell. It may not be the most melodic soundtrack you ever heard, but it's intense and is a perfect fit for the atmosphere. If you stack up all the NES shooters, you can't go wrong with putting Contra on the conversation for the top of the heap. It's a must-have for NES collectors. Just keep in mind that the difficulty is no joke. The first stage takes place in the jungle. Kill the soldiers in front of you and fire down at the one below, along with the icon to get a machine gun power up. This will give you a better rapid rate and you can just hold the B button down and fire automatically instead of pressing it for each shot. A floating capsule will fly in from the left. You have to shoot these in order to get the items they contain before they sail away. In this case, a rapid fire upgrade which speeds up the rate of whatever weapon you have equipped. After a few more soldiers is a couple of bridges that are rigged to blow up once you cross them. Jump to avoid falling into the water, which like I said earlier doesn't kill you in this game, but it's easier to traverse across land in the upper route. Plus you'll miss the spread gun power up, which makes aiming less of a problem due to its spread shot. It's the best upgrade in the game. There's a series of mounted cannons ahead. You can shoot down at them. The spread gun makes things a lot easier, but they shift slowly so you can just run past them without getting hit as long as you don't slow down. There's a flamethrower upgrade down here. Grab it only if you didn't get the spread gun already or you died, and take that as a rule of thumb the rest of the way. I'll point out all the upgrades, but Grab them at your own discretion based on what you have. These red flashing ones pop out of nowhere and fire more bullets at a time than the regular guns, but they're essentially the same as the standard ones, and you can easily dispose of them by dropping to the ground where they can't hit you and fire down their proverbial throats. Right after that is a spread gun upgrade and two floating capsules. The top one is a rapid fire upgrade, and the bottom one is a laser gun. It's decent due to the damage it does, but it doesn't get a lot of range and its rapid rate sucks. A few more soldiers and cannons later is the boss, a barricade with two turrets and a sniper. You have to take each piece out. Keep your distance and climb to the top so you can wipe out the sniper. Then scale down, avoid the arcing balls at the guns fire, drop to your belly and fire at the guns. First one, then the other, and you're done with stage one. 
Second stage is the base, part one, and it's one of the 3D levels I mentioned earlier. There are five doors you have to break into and then fight the boss, totaling six segments. You have to shoot down the flashing orb thing on the door to break the lock and blow up the door. In your way are enemy soldiers and guns mounted on the walls. The soldiers usually fire standard bullets at you, which you can avoid by dropping down, but you usually won't be able to hit the lock in this state since they're most often level with you while you're standing, so you'll have to stand up at some point. Some of them toss grenades at you too, which travel slowly and there's more than enough time to react and get out of the way, but you want to make sure you don't travel into a line of fire. So hopefully you just kill these guys off before they get a chance to even bother you. You also can't move forward as there's an electrical current blocking your path until you blast the door down anyway. The first door, the lock is dead center. The second door, the lock is on the left with the fixed gun on the right. The third one, the lock is center and on the floor with the fixed guns on either side. The fourth door, the lock is dead center with the fixed gun just above it. In the fifth door, the lock is dead center with three fixed guns surrounding it. You probably want to destroy the guns first if you want to make things easier, except door three, as you can simply just drop down and fire without having to worry about them. In door four, watch out for the rolling pin. You want to jump over it if you don't want to die. You can also get more power-ups from killing certain soldiers. There's a rapid upgrade in door number one, machine guns in doors two and four, and a flamethrower in door five. The boss is a large terminal with two guns mounted on it, one on each side. They each fire a spread shot of three bullets. Your best bet is to stay away from the center of the screen as there's more oncoming fire from both guns in that spot. Stay between the bullets. Don't jump as there's more room to maneuver between them if you stay low. And take out the guns. The other four panels do nothing except get in the way of your attacks. Take them out too, as you'll need to destroy all of them anyway and then you'll have to face an orb that sends other orbs downward. They travel relatively slow and don't change direction, so you should be able to outmaneuver them without much of a fuss to finish it off. Stage three is the waterfall. You ascend this one vertically, so you're gonna be doing a lot of jumping from platform to platform. Early on, there's a lot of soldiers and falling rocks. Make sure you're never directly underneath them and fire upward at the soldiers to clear them out of the way as you jump. There's a flamethrower upgrade, followed by a laser upgrade shortly thereafter. Then you'll want to watch out for the sniper hidden in the waterfall. He only fires a single shot upward, which splits into three and cascades down. You can kill him from underneath before you ascend any further, or just keep yourself on the opposite side of him and easily avoid his attacks. There's a turret mounted on the far right, which you may want to take out to make crossing this flaming bridge easier. There are two flames that travel slowly across the bridge which are easy enough to avoid, but there are enemy soldiers nearby, plus the turret if you haven't taken it out. So that's why I recommend that you do so, so you can avoid the potential perfect storm. Two floating capsules show up. The one on the right is a rapid shot, and the one on the left is a barrier, which grants you temporary invincibility. You can get both, but that's easier said than done. Otherwise, the choice of which to grab is left to your personal preference. Hopefully you don't even need the rapid shot, and your decision is basically made up for you. More soldiers and mounted guns await you. Blast them, keeping your distance from the guns as you line them up for the kill. And grab the spread gun upgrade. You'll likely want to ignore the machine gun upgrade just ahead of it unless you die somewhere between them. The home stretch is quite easy. Just a few soldiers and then it's the boss, a giant alien. It has two arms that each shoot one fireball and the head in the center will spit three in a spread shot. Stay to one side and concentrate on the arm keeping your eye on the projectiles. Drop down or dodge to avoid them, particularly watch out for the ones that it spits. After taking out each arm, you just have to worry about the head, or mouth really, as you need to fire into it when it's open. Stand underneath and don't jump, similar to the last boss. Just shift over slightly to avoid the center shot and move back inside to finish him off. Stage four is the base part two. It's just like part one, only there are more doors this time, eight instead of five and more hazards, including rolling pins in every single segment, only they're staggered around instead of all lined up in a row. There's also more than one lock in some of the rooms, and they're blocked with a shield, so you have to blast through that first, just to give you something more to do, I guess. Door 1 has a turret on each side of the lock, which is dead center. Door 2 has four locks that are all lined up with the ground and no guns. Door 3 has two locks, one on each side, and a gun above and in between them. 
Door 4 is the same, except the locks are level with the ground this time. Door 5 has two locks with a gun in between them. Door 6 has a lock in the dead center with no guns. Door 7 has a gun dead center with a lock above it. You'll have to jump to shoot it. And finally, door 8 has a lock dead center with three guns surrounding it. There's a flamethrower upgrade in doors 2 and 7, a laser in door 3, a barrier in door 4, which can really come in handy, a rapid upgrade in door 5, spread upgrade in door 6, and finally, machine gun in door 8. The boss is a terminal very much like the last one in stage 2, only this one has soldiers that patrol the area and shoot down, while the blue ones will dive down at you from above. Try to kill the gunners before they get a chance to aim, as that'll lead to less bullets in your direction. You've got three blockade panels and only one gun turret this time. Take them out and then you have to deal with the second form. It's similar to the last, only that there are two of these things. And the orbs that they fire down are smaller, but heat seeking. So they'll chase you down after missing you the first time. So it's always a good idea to blast away the orbs and get them the hell out of the way. It should be the first priority since it's really the only thing that can hurt you. Then take out the guns, and it's on to stage 5, the snowfield. The gunners at the beginning are easy enough to kill simply by dropping down and firing, but you've got to watch out for the bombs that get tossed at you from behind the trees in the background. They travel slow enough, so just make sure you get between them. There's a machine gun upgrade here, and a rapid upgrade in a floating capsule soon after. There'll be more gunners and bombs tossed from the background, and you'll find a flamethrower upgrade along with three floating capsules that pass by, a rapid upgrade up top, spread gun down below, and this falcon icon destroys every on-screen enemy, although there's not exactly a plethora of them at this point. They're just the underwater snipers you dealt with in the waterfall stage, not hard to get by them anyway, so whatever. After that, you'll meet up with this tank that'll try to run you over. Get back and fire all hell into it. If it stops and fires, the bullets will travel slower than shit, so just keep on shooting. Don't get conservative, because the bastard is just going to keep driving till it runs you over. After a gunner is another tank. Same strategy as last time. After that, just some more gunners, bombs from the trees, and a laser upgrade that you may or may not want. And soon after is the boss, a small spaceship. Stand directly underneath it and fire upwards at it. It'll then send four minions at you and disappear. Simply jump to avoid them and wait for the ship to reappear. Rinse, wash, and repeat until you're done with them. Stage 6 is the energy zone. Early on, you've got a few soldiers and a machine gun upgrade if you need it. Several gunners later is a laser upgrade, and this is when things start getting hairy in this stage, as you'll be introduced to the flame beams. Going near them will trigger it. You'll have to jump across as it's retracting. There'll be more flame beams right after, but as long as you stay low to the floor and concentrate on the gunners, you'll be fine. After that, there are beams coming from the walls horizontally. Get down and wait for the beam to retract and scale upward, repeating the process. This next spot has two flame beams that crisscross. You can slip down here if you time everything perfectly because you'll need to get the invincibility barrier on your way down to avoid getting killed by the beam. But you're much better off simply killing the soldier on the other side and then jumping across like a rational person. The home stretch is where you're really going to want to take your time, at least in the spots with the vertical fire beams. Stay up top so you don't have to deal with any of the horizontal beams, kill the gunners, and then slip by the beams using the tried and true method, and the boss is just ahead. This goofy bastard is slow but big, so jumping over him requires you to get the proper trajectory, you don't want to bump into him. His other threat are these weird discs he tosses at you, I guess this guy wanted to be in the Olympics or something. Stand back, jump over them, and jump over him when he walks towards you. He's slow, but like I said, you gotta get it right. So get a tight jump close to him and repeat the process until he's destroyed. Stage 7 is the hangar. It doesn't really matter which route you take at the beginning, just watch the hydraulic spikes that come down, and pass through once you get the pattern down. A flamethrower upgrade becomes available in a floating capsule if you need it. You can ride these carts down here, but I don't like having zero control over the pace, so I recommend the top route more. Again, be patient with the hydraulic spikes, blast the gunner down, and grab the rapid upgrade in the floating capsule. Next is a line of spiked walls that pop out of the floor. Be on the lookout for them, blast through them, and take out any soldiers that try to sneak up on you from behind during this exchange. The top route next has a little less to contend with. 
blast down the spiked walls and carefully pass through the hydraulic spikes. And there'll be an invincibility barrier, so you won't have to be cautious about the hydraulic spikes for a little while. Along the way, there'll be two floating capsules. The first is a machine gun upgrade, and the second is a spread gun. Definitely grab the spread if you don't have it. Take the top route and destroy the spiked wall. Then there'll be three more for you to take down before you reach more hydraulic spikes. Pass through them slowly and be ready to take down the spiked wall at the end that tries to barricade you inside to be squished. After a few more gunners, you're at the boss, another fortification wall with guns. Soldiers will show up to intervene, get them out of the way, and watch out for the gunfire from underneath you. The two guns will alternate with their shots which will fire up into the air and split into three, similar to the scuba snipers from earlier. Your target is the panel on the wall. Blast it when you don't have soldiers or bullets up your ass, and you'll move on to the eighth and final stage, the alien's lair. Right off the bat, you get two power-ups. How generous of the last stage to start you off with this. Machine gun upgrade up top, and an invincibility barrier at the bottom. Grab it if you can, and a huge fucking alien head, obviously inspired by the movie Alien, shows up and spits out its baby minions at you. It won't move, so just stand against the wall and blast up at it. Move only if you need to kill any of the babies, and the wall will explode along with it once it's destroyed. After that is a series of weird looking mouths in the wall that spit out these slow as shit static blobs at you. Well, they're slow as shit, but then they speed up all of a sudden. To shoot them down before they can pick up speed, along with the mouths, they're really only a threat in the narrow spaces. There'll be a spread gun upgrade. Grab it if you need it, and the rest of the stage is just a barrage of mouths. Keep your distance and blast them if you can, or just run by as some of them you don't really need to kill. Definitely kill this one here that shows up right after these creepy crawler aliens squirm by, as it will otherwise get in your way during the final boss, Giant Alien Heart. It spews out some of the creepy crawls you just saw. They'll crawl out of both the ceiling and the floor. Shoot them down and watch out for the ones overhead as they'll try to drop down on you. The target is the heart, but you'll want to take out the pods that they surface from first to make things a little easier and reduce the amount of creepy crawlers. Drop down and blast away at the pods on the ground, standing up only to shoot down the overhead crawlies. You don't need to destroy them all, you can take out the heart without wiping out any of the pods if you want, but this method clears the path and makes it easier not to catch a stray along the way. After enough shots, you'll destroy the heart and get a cutscene where you fly off in a chopper, escaping the island that you just blew up, and you get a congratulations paragraph, followed by the credits. So that's the end of the game, but you have the option from here to start over with a higher difficulty. And that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.